Uh, so finally, uh, is this just for cancer? Well, there's a lot of involvement of proteases in other important diseases. And just, I only have time for one example. This is atherosclerosis, which is, of course, a major problem of its own. In particular, one of the big issues is can we ever distinguish vulnerable plaque, which is really likely to give you a stroke or a heart attack, depending on whether it flies loose into your brain or your heart, from stable plaque. And the current means of, say, uh, CAT scanning or uh, basically X-ray and ultrasound tend to just reveal calcifications and don't do currently very well at distinguishing the plaques that are ready to rupture and let stuff fly. Those are the ones you really worry about and need urgent uh, uh, attention and things like stents or bypasses and so on. So well, uh, uh, actually, there's a lot of belief that maybe enzymes are in, proteolytic enzymes are involved in weakening the cap. So uh, one of those is thrombin, the famous clotting enzyme. Uh, thrombin is involved in all sorts of things that having to do with, obviously, thrombosis and uh, uh, of cardiovascular conditions. So instead of PLG, LAG as an MMP site, we simply change it to DPRSFL, which is actually the six amino acids from the main target of thrombin signaling in the protease activated receptor. The thrombin receptor is actually proteolized when it meets thrombin. And this is the sequence right around the cleavage site. And we just, just blindly took six amino acids. Normally, thrombin cuts right after the arginine between that and the serine, made it into one of these actable cell, cell, activatable cell penetrating peptides. And now you can highlight atherosclerotic plaques. And this is within a uh, a living mouse. Most of you looking at this field would hardly know where the carotid is, let alone where the plaques are uh, in this confusing image. But once you see the fluorescence, uh, you can see that this was, uh, these are plaques and can be verified by subsequent histology. And with the way we get these plaques is from uh, genetic knockout mice, APOE knockout plus one year on a Western diet, uh, will fill this animal nicely with uh, atherosclerosis. And so we are still working on this question of distinguishing vulnerable from non-vulnerable plaque, uh, particularly collaborating with Jim Hamilton and BU as a nice model for how to make plaques vulnerable. And there's looking, it's looking a bit promising, but I'm not ready to you know, say any more. OK, so this is a mechanism of cleavage activated uptake that is already delivering contrast agents for optical and uh, an, uh, MR imaging. We're still working on nuclear imaging and radiation sensitizers, uh, but Dox Rubison is also showing some promise. Linkers can be cleaved by proteases, uh, which I've emphasized, or actually anything that cuts the linkage, but that's the easiest target. We think we have enzymatic amplification because there's n the levels of the MMP in the tumor are way below 10, micro 10 or 50 micromolar. It's more at the low nanomolar concentration. Uh, the peptide's relatively easy to synthesize, at least compared, compared to if I were an organic chemist. Uh, organic chemists love to make really tough molecules, natural product looking molecules. These are nothing like that challenge. Largely, they're made on a peptide synthesizer, which I prefer because that means we can actually churn out lots of them, even if it isn't chemically glorious. Um, but that's me. Um, MMPs and other proteases are also involved in stroke, atherosclerosis, arthritis. Uh, we think the earliest clinical application will be in image-guided surgery because there the, 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 the proof of efficacy is very direct and visual, and you get the benefit of cl surgeon's uh, clinical judgment. We do have some background staining of other tissues. Originally, I showed you skin and cartilage. We've managed to get rid of those, but we still have a lot of uptake in the liver because the liver is chock full of proteolytic enzymes, and the liver still takes up at least as much or more as the tumor. But fortunately, we hope that after a bunch of years in medical school, the doctor knows the difference between the liver and the tumor. Uh, we will not cure liver cancers, by the way. And this problem is not unique to us. Uh, FDG PET lights up the brain and the heart like crazy, because they have enormous glucose utilization. And you just learn that you ignore those organs. You're, you're, the, those are the false positives that you see in the very first uh, uh, universally. Finally, let me comment that in a funny way, this is a bit like FRET that many of you have been interested in that I used to work on a lot. In a funny way, it's like FRET because the polyarginine is the analog of the donor. It's the one that wants to be active. In this case, it wants to jump into a cell. The polyglutamate then in proximity quenches the donor's tendency to light up. 
but in this case, just by uh, electrostatically neutralizing it and preventing uh, retention in the cells. And when you cut the linker, you unleash the retention mechanism, which in this case leaves the fluorescence or chemotherapy in situ and therefore effectively lights up the tissue by a completely different mechanism. So sorry for running on too long, but I thought if you, any of you are interested in the final dessert bit, these are some fun photos. That's me talk, getting the thing from the king. Uh, he was saying something to me at the time. I don't know. I still don't know what he was saying because there was too much, <laughs> too much noise from the crowd, and I admit too much adrenaline in me. Uh, so I hope it was something nice. Uh, that's the three of us and me characteristically looking glum in the wrong direction. Uh, Asamu Shumamura and Marty Chalfi, my co-laureates. Um, we're all wearing our horrible penguin suits. Um, this is the banquet afterward, which is, of course, a wonderful occasion. But you do have to, we did, fortunately, they warn us, once you go in there and sit down, you cannot go to the restroom because you are not allowed to rise at the high table in the presence of royalty while they're seated. So if you see a restroom on the way in, use it. <laughs> <laughs> and we took that advice, and we're OK for three or four hours. It was enough distraction that uh, you know, we were OK. Uh, there's a nice picture of me talking to Princess Madeline, where she's actually laughing at something I'm saying, I guess. <laughs> uh, and as some of you have heard, the thing we were mostly discussing is what is it like to be the youngest child of your family? Because I'm the youngest of three, and she is the youngest of three. And that's Paul Krugman, the famous New York Times columnist on her other side. She actually spent most of the evening talking to him. because. <laughs> Most lay people would much rather talk to someone, an economist who works on economic crises. And this was 2008, right? So December, we were all in the throes of the major worries. Uh, so, but there was this one picture. And he was slightly annoyed that the picture in the paper actually had her talking <laughs> to me. And uh, Wendy was obviously, obviously there. And she could not object that I had this beautiful young woman to talk to because she was seated next to a pretty handsome guy herself. <laughs> this is Prince, Prince Carl Philip. That's uh, Madeline's older brother. And uh, he's very wise to these events. You know, for them, this is so boring. Every year, they got to sit with these boring scientists. <laughs> and so when it, as she noted, every, she later realized that every time the press photographer came around, he was alert and looked up and gave them a good look. <laughs> she, as a naive first timer who will never do this again, none of us will do this again. She's busy on her food, uh, <laughs> but, uh, not realizing that you have to look good for the photographers. But they are roaming up and down the aisle, other people in their fancy dress. Later on, the, um, the next few day or so, the Stockholm University students roast the laureates. None of the physicists showed up, only us chemists. Uh, and uh, they force us to uh, carry uh, a, a giant paper mache frog, which is their emblem. And we are formally inducted into the order of the ever smiling jumping green frog, which was particularly appropriate this year um, for us because it was green, right? We were all very happy. And that's me holding one leg, uh, uh, Tsutomu Shimamura, that's Osamu's son. Os Osamu didn't feel up to, to an all night sort of roast, so he sent a son instead. And back there is Marty Chalfin underneath, I'm sorry, behind the fourth leg. Fortunately, that's where Douglas Prasher, who you know, cloned GFP, he was our guest. And we're glad that he was able to be included in this ceremony. And he was especially recognized by the students. That's Wendy when she is looking up. <laughs> um, so with that, uh, thank you for your attention.